Hello, welcome to lesson 3 on the topic number system. In lesson 2, you would have seen, you would have learned the uh, understanding of prime and composite numbers. We'll move on. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the divisibility rules of numbers. We are talking, going to talk about the divisibility rules of numbers. Now, uh, the divisibility rules are uh, concepts which all of us are supposed to know. So we will quickly run through the divisibility rules and uh, focus on some important aspects. A number is divisible by 2 if the last digit if the last digit is 0 or even. Now why we are saying 0 or even is because in mathematics we still do not have an absolute uh, clarity with regard to whether 0 standalone is an even digit or not. And therefore we say that if, if a number is has the last digit as 0 or even then it is going to be divisible by 2. When is a number divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3 if the sum of all the digits is divisible by 3. If the sum of all the digits is divisible by 3 then the number is also going to be divisible by 3. Now here let me share with you something interesting, an important aspect. Uh, let me take an example of uh, 3, 2, 5, 7, 9. Okay. I don't know whether this number is divisible by 3 or not, but let me share something with you. What we normally do, 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, this is 5 and 5, 10. And 17, 17 and 9 is 26. Now since 26 when divided by 3 is going to give a remainder of 2. Therefore this number is also going to give a remainder of 2. I hope all of us are aware of this aspect. Can we check that the remainder will be 2? Yes, we can absolutely do that. 3, 2, 5, 7, 9 divided by 3 so 3 1 3 then you have 0 then you have 25 3 8 24 then 17 3 5 15 then 29 and uh, 3 9 27 remainder is 2 okay so we are absolutely sure that the divisibility rule also gives us the remainder now what was the shortcut that i was uh, planning to share with all of you. Now when we have to do this 3, 2, 5, 7, 9 and I am I'm in a competitive exam, I will never do this. So what I will do, please listen carefully. I will strike out all those numbers which by themselves are divisible by 3 or in combination with some other number they are divisible by 3. So what I will do, I will strike out 3, I will strike out 9. I will strike out 5 plus 7 because that is 12. What is remaining? I will be left with 2 and therefore this number when divided by 3 is going to give a remainder of 2. Is the divisibility rule same as this? Absolutely. But when it comes to actually solving it, we will not do this. We will use the shortcut. Hope you are appreciating. So a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of if the sum of all the digits if the sum of all the digits is divisible by 3 let's take it uh, further ahead a number is divisible by 4 if the number formed if the number formed by the last two digits is divisible by 4 a number is divisible by 4 if the number formed by the last two digits is divisible by 4. That means what, what, what was the number that we had taken? 
3, 2, 5, 7, 9. What is the number formed by the last two digits? The number formed by the last two digits is 79. Is 79 divisible by 4? No. So this number is not going to be divisible by 4. What is the remainder when 79 is divided by 4? The remainder is 3. Therefore, when this number will be divided by 4, the remainder will be 3. Now, I have a task for all of you. I want you to find out, and this is something absolutely interesting, I want you to find out why is it that the divisibility rule of 3 is based on the sum of the digits? Why is it that the divisibility rule of 4 is based on the number formed by the last two digits? Right? This is for you to do and get back to me. You can, you can get back to me, you can send me a message, you can give me a call, maybe a WhatsApp, but I would want you to look at this and try to understand. This will be very interesting. Okay? Alright, let's get back. A number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is a number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is 0 or 5. Okay. A number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by both 2 and 3. Now, I don't know how many of us are aware of this, but every number which is made up of co-prime components. Let me, let me explain what are co-prime components. Any two numbers which have a highest common factor of 1, they are said to be co-prime. Let me repeat any two numbers which have a highest common factor of 1 are said to be co-prime. So 2 and 3 are co-prime. So any number which is made up of co-prime components, its divisibility rule will always, always be governed by the divisibility rule of the co-prime components. So if somebody asks you, what is the divisibility rule of 20? Okay, if somebody asks you, do you know the divisibility rule of 20? You say, yes, I know the divisibility rule of 20. If a number is divisible by both 4 and 5, it is going to be divisible by 20. But please remember that the components have to be co-prime. Okay, so what is the divisibility rule of 6? If a number is divisible by both 2 and 3, it is going to be divisible by 6. So we have seen the divisibility rule of 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Uh, when is a number divisible by 8? Oh, you would be thinking how about 7? We will come back to that, don't worry. So when is a number divisible by 8? A number is divisible by 8 if the number formed by the last 3 digits is divisible by 18. Exactly similar to 4. But for 4, we look at the last 2 digits. For 8, we look at the last 3 digits. What is the reason? I am sure you are going to find out and get back to me on this. Okay? When is a number divisible by 9? A number is divisible by 9 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. Okay. Now let me let me share something with you. Uh, when we were small, when we were small, possibly in six, seven standard, many of us used to think that these divisibility rules are just meant to be memorized, right? And that is that is probably the way we were asked to learn. I'm sorry. I would like to tell you that all of them have a mathematical concept, have a mathematical logic behind it. The same is true for 9 also. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, then the number is going to be divisible by 9. What about the divisibility rule of 10? We are not going to talk about the divisibility rule of 10. If a number has at least one zero towards the end as its units place or, or further, uh, tens, hundreds and so on then the number is going to be divisible by 
uh, n. When is the number going to be divisible by 12? Again, uh, the question would have uh, come to your mind, how about 11? We will come to that, don't worry. A number is divisible by 12 if it is divisible by both 3 and 4. So, we have looked at the divisibility of 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12. In all these cases, except when uh, it is made up of co-prime components, other than this, in all the other cases, you are also able to find out the remainder if it is not completely divisible. So the divisibility rule will give you the answer to both the questions. One, is the number going to be divisible? And two, if it is not divisible, what will be the remainder? Okay, right. Now, towards the end of our discussion on uh, the divisibility rules, we are going to look at the divisibility rule of 11 and then finally 7. Okay, so let's talk about 11. The divisibility rule of 11 is a little different and that also has a basis. I would encourage you to find it out. But I am sure when you get to the understanding, when you get to understanding the divisibility rule, the basis for 3, 4, 9, 8, you will automatically understand the divisibility rule of 11. So what is the divisibility rule of 11? Let me take an example. Suppose A, B, C, D, E is a 5 digit number. Start from the rightmost end and give a value to all positions. I repeat, start from the rightmost end and give a value to all the positions. Now, what you need to do? Sum of all digits at odd places. Not the sum of odd digits. Not the sum of all digits, sum of all digits at all places. So what are we talking about? We are talking about E plus C plus A. Sum of all digits at all places. Minus sum of all digits at even places. Minus sum of all digits at even places. That is what are we saying? We are talking about D plus B. Sum of all digits at odd places minus sum of all digits at even places. If the result is 0 or a multiple of 11, the number is divisible by 11. This is the divisibility rule of 11. Will this also give me the remainder? Yes. This divisibility rule will also give you the remainder. Alright, so uh, that is how you find out whether a number is divisible by 11 or not. Now coming to the last part. The divisibility rule of 7 is a little different. Okay, the divisibility rule of 7 is a little different and therefore we will have to, we'll have to understand the divisibility rule of 11, uh, sorry 7. What is the divisibility rule of 7? Units place multiplied by 2 sub, subtracted from the remaining number ok subtracted from the remaining number if the result is 0 or a multiple of 7 then the number is also divisible by 7 please look at the divisibility rule Units place multiplied by 2 subtracted from the remaining number. If the result is 0 or a multiple of 7, then the number is also going to be divisible by 7. Does it have a logic? Absolutely. Can you find out? Yes, you need to find out. Okay. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's take a number 343. Is 343 going to be divisible by 7? Absolutely. Why? Because 343 is the cube of 7. You must remember some of these values now. It is the cube of 7, 343. Okay, let us apply the divisibility rule to check whether 343 is going to be divisible by 7 or not. What are we saying? Multiply the units place by 2. So what is the result? 6. And subtract it from the remaining number. 
What is the remaining number? 34. So 34 minus 6 is how much? 28. Is 28 divisible by 7? Yes. Therefore, 343 will also be divisible by 7. Okay. So the divisibility rule of 7 is units place multiplied by 2 subtracted from the remaining number. If the result is 0 or a multiple of 7, then the number is also going to be divisible by 7. So students, that was lesson 3 uh, with the objective of understanding the divisibility rule of numbers. Thank you.